Hello all my beautiful sisters from those other misters and welcome back to my channel. Is my mic on? Yes it is. Great. Let's continue. It's time for empties. I have one very full box here although there's some large stuff in there that's taking up excess space. I also have a box that's not so full down there. We're going to go through it all. I don't remember last time I filmed an empties. I'm assuming it would have been two months ago. Maybe three. Why are you crying? Don't cry. Why are you crying? <laughs> Don't pull things out of the bin. Oh my god, get a dog. Get a dog, guys. They're great. Um, so let's start with some stuff. I actually have three glass house candles right here. So I've made it my mission to work through my glass house candles because I don't love them as much as I used to and I don't know if you know um, it's because they changed from uh, or they changed their wax type so I think they changed from paraffin wax to soy wax is that correct I think I'm pretty sure um, I've just found that they're they don't burn as nicely as they used to. They don't have the scent throw that they used to. Um, and I'm just not really all that impressed by them. And I don't think they're worth the $50 price tag. So the candles that I went through are Florence, which is Wild Peonies and Lily. This one burnt quite badly. Um, I just couldn't get it to burn evenly and it was just a struggle towards the end so I gave up on that. Um, I also have Grandma's Punch which is pomegranate and strawberries. This smells amazing but um, I didn't get, didn't get much like scent throw from it so I wasn't too impressed. And this one is Magic Spell which is the pumpkin pie fragrance this one had better scent throw but look at how badly it burnt like I had tunneling the wicks would not stay lit um, also I have had this one multiple times in the past I bought this one uh, because it was in this beautiful limited edition jar which I'm going to keep and use for something probably brushes or whatever because um, it's gorgeous now this one for me was where I was like, yeah, something's just not not good about these candles. Um, obviously, the burn was horrendous and the scent throw wasn't as good as the pumpkin pie ones that I've had in the past. The smell is still the same, but it's just not, it, it didn't sort of permeate the house as much as uh, the original one did. So I'm really, like, I'm not impressed. There's still like... There's like that, that is still all wax in there. Um, whereas usually they would burn beautiful and clean all the way down to the very, very bottom and there would only be a tiny bit of wax in there. So I'm just going to scrape that out and throw it in the bin because it's like, I, I can't be bothered. I just want to keep the jar and that's it. Um, I'm also burning at the moment another one that's almost done and it's one of my oldest glass house candles that I sort of squirreled away for forever. Um, I think it's like a chocolate brownie one or something like that. And the, um, the oil, the scent oil has like separated throughout the candle that tells you how old it is, but it is burning like an absolute dream and it fills the whole house with scent. So I was wondering if potentially one of the issues I was experiencing with uh, my glass house candles was an age problem, but the oldest, oldest candle that I have, although it's showing signs of age, it's still burning beautifully, perfectly, and the scent is intense. So I'm definitely putting it down to the new formulation for me it's not worth the price tag. I'm not paying $50 for a candle that doesn't really do much other than offer, um, you know, a nice looking jar and a little bit of ambiance with its light. Um, I can buy a $5 candle from Kmart if I want that experience. 
I don't need to spend a lot of money on a candle just to make me feel kind of cozy and nice. Like I can get that at a budget rate. The reason why I was so willing to spend a large amount of money on these glass house candles was because it is a home fragrance and it fills our whole home. So now that they don't do that, it's not really, you know, it's not something I'm willing to spend my money on. So what I'm thinking I'm going to do is finish off the last of my glass house candles. I think I have two left. I have the one that I'm burning, which is almost done. And I have the Melbourne one. Now the Melbourne one, I don't think it ever made it onto the shelves. Um, I think it was pulled from the shelves because there was something not quite right with the formula. Um, I don't know if they managed to fix it and then it did make it onto the shelves. I'm not sure. Whatever the case, I have one. I was sent one which was amazing and I love it and I kind of treasure it and I'm a little bit like maybe I don't want to burn it. But the beauty is I can still keep the bottle or the jar which is what I'll do um, and then I think I've got a subscriber sent um, some handmade candles so I've got those which I'm gonna play with as well and once I'm out of candles I will buy another glass house candle I might buy one or two just to see how I go with them because um, it's been quite a few years since I purchased one I think it's been at least two years so I'm thinking maybe there might have been some improvements made in that time because I know there was a lot of complaints about the formula. I'll try them out. I'll give them one last go. And if they don't um, meet my expectations of what I knew and loved about Glass House, then I will just not buy their candles anymore and I will just explore other brands in the future. So, yeah, there's that. Disappointing. But, you know, it is what it is. Before I forget, I want to talk about some uh, empties that I had from when I was uh, traveling recently. I took photos of them and then just threw them away because I'm not bringing home empty products. Um, I had the Nivea Invisibly Smooth Body Lotion. It was just like a travel mini. This stuff is fine. It's not, like, special or impressive. It doesn't feel luxury. It doesn't smell great but it moisturizes the body, which is the ultimate goal. Um, I would potentially buy it again. Like if I was sort of struggling and I needed like a little travel size, I would buy that exact one again. Um, but I feel like I'm in a position where that's not likely to happen. Um, I also had two of the B-Hydra Intensive Hydration Serums from Drunk Elephant. Oh, fucking hell, man. So the larger one wouldn't even pump. Um, there was product in there. I like, you know, screwed the top off and had a look, but the airless pump was just faulty. So I was using the little one because I thought I'll use the little one and then I can scrape product out of the big one as I need it. Um, but I didn't even manage to get through the little one. I had a reaction to it and um, my, my skin was like super dry, rough, itchy. It was horrible um so yeah uh there's that i i've i feel like i've used this product in the past and not had an issue with it um but obviously there's something in there that my skin was just like hell no not not today satan um the reaction i had was quite similar to the one that i have to vitamin c serum so i don't know what's in it i didn't actually I didn't look at the ingredients. I don't care. I just noticed I was having a reaction and uh, I just stopped stopped using it. So there's that. I also finished up a mini of the Trilogy Rose Hip Antioxidant Plus Oil. I burnt through that pretty quickly because uh, my skin was freaking out. Um, I also almost finished my second one, but I didn't didn't quite get there. So anyway, there's that. I finished those. Okay, I have some like sheet mask and packety things. Let's just go through them. Uh, Neogen Probiotics Relief Mask. This was in my project pan. I used it recently. It was really, really nice. It has quite a thick, milky serum in it. Um, and it is super hydrating and quite soothing. It was It was nice. I would use them again. I don't know if I've got some more um, 
if I do, I'll happily use them. But I would even consider buying these again. Uh, I have the Pinot Noir um, uh, Repair and Moisturize Deep Conditioner from Hask. Um, I think this maybe has quite a bit of um, protein in it because I noticed as I was using it, I uh, was my hair was getting really rough and feeling quite brittle so I think I had like a bit of a protein overload um, I didn't feel like I didn't feel like it was hydrating enough um, usually what I experience when I use a hair mask that contains protein as long as my hair is getting moisturized enough I don't usually get that like overload but I feel like this potentially wasn't wasn't balanced enough um, or it could poten potentially just be that the rest of my hair routine was very balanced and this was just too much for me. Uh, like I don't really struggle a lot with breakage and stuff like that because I have, I, I use really good hair products and I use shit that's like, you know, it's designed to work with the issues that I have. So yeah, I, I wouldn't buy this one again. I just didn't find it very reliable. Um, I also have the Power Ringer mask pack from, oh, it's a Red Ginseng Deep Power Ringer from Eliza Vecca. I don't remember this. It's been a while, so there's that. Uh, the Collagen Skin Firming Sheet Mask from Matured House. I think I like this. I think it was just hydrating, though. I don't think I really, like, I don't think I was wowed by it. Um, and I have the Davines Restless Circle hair mask which I quite enjoyed. It's um, an invisible anti-breakage hair mask. You pop it in dry hair and then like before you wash it and then you shampoo and style as usual um, and I, I quite liked it. It was it was good. I will say like I do prefer hair masks that I use in the shower. I just find it easier to remember to use them because, you know, I'm in the shower and I'm washing my hair. So it makes more sense. Uh, but I did manage to get through this one just fine. And I don't know if I have more of these kicking around. If I do, I will use them. Um, okay, I've got the Neogen Probiotics Double Action Serum. So this is actually in the same range as this sheet mask. Um, I, I didn't love it. I wasn't really excited by it. Usually what I look for when I'm using skincare is um, either maintaining what I already have which I usually go for you know smoothness and softness and a nice hydrated base um, or a slight improvement on what I've already got going on and I didn't feel like this was really doing much of anything so I started to use it on my body just to finish it up I wouldn't buy it again I wasn't like I said, I wasn't excited by it. Um, I have the Wet n Wild Pri uh, Primer Water Spray. This is okay. It's kind of like a more affordable, not dupe, but kind of similar to the Smashbox Primer Water. Um, you can use it as like a primer. You can use it as a finishing spray, whatever. Um, I know it's like limited edition, so I can't get it again. I, I guess I would like it if these things were a little bit more readily available because I might be willing to, you know, play around and, you know, try some new shit out, but they're not, not super accessible. Well, I suppose they are. You can get them quite easily online. Glam Raider usually is really good about stocking um, a fairly large Wet n Wild range if I'm remembering correctly it's been quite a while since I uh, had a look but yeah look I'm just not in the market for a product like this at the moment you guys have seen how many sprays I've got it's like I don't need any more um soul body gradual tanning lotion now okay I love the formula of this it is really really nice and moisturizing and I love the smell of it as well it's kind of to me it's like a tropical tropical holiday. Um, I think what I don't love about it is the color of the gradual tan that it leaves. Uh, if I'm applying it regularly, it can start to look a little bit on the orange side. So I'd say that the undertone is just not quite right for me, but like the actual product in itself, like the 
the cream and what it does to my skin in terms of hydrating it. I love. Fantastic. Beautiful. I actually, I, I can't deny that there are some soul body um, products and Force Ray beauty products and Colourpop makeup products that I really, really enjoy and I think they're worth the money. So there's that. Um, okay. Oil cleanser from Muji. Oh, this <laughs> lasted a long, 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 long time. And um, I used it. It's, uh, how much is in there? Is it a litre? 400 mils. 400 mils? Yeah, 400 mils. Felt, felt like 400 litres. Okay, if you hear noise outside, it's mum hanging out the washing. It's the dog scavenging around. And it's also people next door doing maintenance to their house. I don't fucking know. Anyway, this was a great product. I really enjoyed it. It's not my favourite. I would prefer the Shilomora cleansing oils or the pharmacy cleansing balms. I've said that a million times, but reminder if you've not heard it before. Um, this is, it's an emulsifying makeup removing oil cleanser. It is very effective. Um, I not only used it on my face, I used it to deep clean my makeup sponges and some of my synthetic brushes and it still lasted me forever. Um, so yeah, I wouldn't rule out buying this again. I'm not in the market for any sort of oil or balm cleansers at the moment. I have plenty, but I would definitely say that this is a good budget option that is still a really good product. Looks like I have some lashes in here. So I have the Ilua Lux Solite lashes, which are my favorites. I'm wearing them today. I cut a pair in half and then I use them as like a demi lash. But for me, they take up almost my whole eye lid area, so or like lash line area. So that might tell you how small my eyes are. Um, I love these. I bought a whole bunch of them off Amazon. I think it was earlier in the year, maybe it was last year, um, just because I can't find them in store anywhere here in Australia. So I just bought a bunch and uh, I love them. I'm still going strong with them. I also used a pair of Mecca Max Fluttering Falsies in Angel Wings. Um, I don't actually remember what these are like. I still keep reaching for my Ilua Solitaire ones. Um, these will be somewhere in like my lash book. Um, obviously, I use them multiple times because, you know, they're a re reusable item and I definitely would have cut these in half as well. I don't know if I used the whole lash, um, like cut it in half and use the whole lash over, you know, both eyes or if I just used part of each lash um, that would actually fit my eye shape without being too big. I don't know. Anyway, whatever. They're done. I... I'm not feeling like, you know, there's any love here, so it's not something I'd buy again. I would keep going back to the Ilua Solitaire ones because, like I said, they're my favourite. Um, Lush Boo Shower Slime. This is, it's fine, but I've said this before. I have, like, Lush shower products, um, they have a lot of dye in them, and I just, I find it a little bit annoying basically, um, when there's like, you know, splatters of color all over my shower that then needs to be wiped down after I've just had a shower. So this is one of those products that did that. So I wouldn't buy this again, but I did think it was fun. Um, and I think it could be fun, like if you have kids or whatever, or you're just looking for something that's a little bit different. It is Halloween themed, so if you're really into Halloween, it might be fun for you. I don't think it's a bad product. It just doesn't suit what I personally look for in um, like a shower cleansing product. Uh, so there's that. But it it's effective. It cleans really well. You only need a little bit. You get a really nice lather, so there's that. Um, Daiso Baby Cotton Buds. I usually use these for makeup um, application or like cleaning up, um, you know, makeup boo-boos. I love these. They're fantastic. I usually buy like a whole bunch of them when I go to Daiso and they last me, you know, a year or something like that. They're excellent. 
Um, another one that, you know, I love and I have in my <laughs> rotation all the time is the Daiso Puff and Sponge Cleanser. This is fantastic and it's pretty much exclusively what I use to clean my um, makeup sponges and usually just my synthetic brushes. I don't use this on my natural brushes because it's quite, it's quite harsh. However, it's fantastic at breaking down makeup that's like stuck in brushes. So that's why I keep buying it. Milk Makeup Vegan Milk Moisturizer. Um, I use this on my face for a little while. I wanted to love it um, and I wanted it to be something that it's just not. So this is a very, very thick cream. When you put it on, you can feel it. It feels heavy. However, it's not very, very moisturizing. If you have very dry skin, um, this is not going to cut it for you. I would say better if you have normal to slightly dry skin. If you have oily skin, you probably won't be able to stand the way this feels on your face because it feels quite heavy. Um, I actually like a moisturizer that feels heavy on the skin. Um, something about it psychologically makes me feel like I'm being hydrated better, but this just doesn't really have all that much in it that hydrates the skin really well. So I ended up just finishing this on my body because I was like, it's either going in the bin or it's being finished up on my body. So I finished it on my body. I wouldn't buy it again. I didn't, I didn't enjoy it. It does, it's not, um, it's not suitable for my skin type. Uh, this is the Function of Beauty uh, Leave-In Hair Treatment. This is not my favorite. Um, I, I like Function of Beauty. I have uh, tried quite a few of their products. I've tried their hair oil. I'm currently using one. I've finished one in the past. I've tried quite a few of their shampoo and conditioner formulas. Um, I've finished quite a few in the past and I also have some still in my bathroom. Um, the leave-in I didn't like. I feel like it is, uh, it was too heavy for my hair, definitely too heavy for my natural hair. On my extensions, I also felt like it was a bit too heavy. It's like it leaves a coating on the hair that makes it um, a little bit sort of stiff and feel kind of, I don't know, just heavy and maybe a little bit dirty. Um, it would be good if you like to style your hair in like, you know, maybe if you're doing like updos and stuff like that and you need to add some texture to the hair. Um, but as like an actual leave-in hair treatment for someone who just wants, you know, tangle-free, shiny, soft, smoothie, hair, smoothie, <laughs> soft, smooth hair, um, this didn't cut it for me. So this isn't one that I would buy again. Um, I think Function of Beauty is kind of cool. I, I love the concept of like having a a shampoo and conditioner that is sort of designed to work with your um, personal hair issues. But I think where you can go wrong with it is sometimes we don't know what our hair issues are. We think it might be one thing, but it's actually related to something else. So it took me a few times to like get the right formula for my hair but once I found a formula that was good for my hair I really really enjoyed it so there's that but the leave-in product is not tailored to your hair the only way they tailor it is with the scent and the color that you choose so there's that this one was uh peppermint I think no was it eucalyptus Anyway, it doesn't matter. It, I like the scent, but the formula wasn't for me. Okay, next up I have the Isn't Tree Hyaluronic Acid Water Essence. Um, this contains eight types of hyaluronic acid. I would just say that's molecular size. Um, I, it was okay. It was fine, but I didn't love it. Um, I wasn't like, oh yeah, this is like exciting and there's something about it that I just really love. It was just okay. Um, definitely helped my skin to feel hydrated, which was nice, but not exciting enough for me to buy it again. I would want to try something else that's like on my wish list, basically. 
Um, do I have any more skin? Yep, here we go. Actually, this was a hyaluronic acid that I absolutely loved. Can you be any more noisy? Hang on, I'm going to close the door. Fuck. So this one is the Plant Base uh, Waterfall Moist Balance Hyaluronic Acid 100. This was so nice. Um, everything about it I loved. So it has like a... Um, like a dropper that loads itself. Um, it was a really light formula, but really effective. So I absolutely loved it. Problem is it was only 20 mils and I burnt through it so, so quickly. Um, I would buy this again in a heartbeat. I haven't looked at the price tag though. So that would play a big part on whether this came back into my life or not, especially considering that it's only 20 mils and I probably went through it in like two months. Uh, so there's that. But the formula, so nice. Really enjoyed it. Okay, more, do I have more full size things? Yes, I've got some makeup. Uh, this is the Hourglass Lip Oil in Bare. Um, so this is like a, it's got like a, a squeezy pump like this and the product comes out of there. Um, it smells like, I don't know, it smells a bit like flowers. It makes me think, oh, now the dog is crying at the door. For God's sake, give me strength. It makes me think of the little like potpourri sachets that you find in like clothing drawers from, you know, like decades ago that just stink. I didn't like it. Also, the formula is quite thick and goopy and sticky and you get like the, if you know, you know. I wouldn't buy that again. Um, I've sort of, like, my past experiences with Hourglass lip glosses have not been pleasant. Um, I've never wanted to repurchase one. I've mostly struggled to finish the ones that I did own and I've decluttered more than I've actually finished so yeah I don't I don't know I don't think I'm gonna really go there with hourglass lip glosses anymore lipsticks different story but yeah there's there's that um I'm trying to find like the full size things What's some oh, I've actually got few oh, I got a few let's go through these um Shiseido Synchro Skin Self Refreshing Foundation this one's in 220 linen which was a fantastic color for me I liked everything about this foundation um I liked the the way that it sat on the skin it you know was really beautiful um it was a decent coverage I'd say like um medium coverage and depending on how much you apply you could go for a lighter coverage or a fuller coverage but because the formula is not super thick it really allows you to have control over the amount uh, that you apply and the you know the coverage that you get without it looking thick and cakey and gross so that was really nice um, it has like a demi matte or natural finish which was really nice as well but it just didn't last on me um, it would start to break down maybe around six to eight hour mark and uh, it was mostly you know in my t-zone on my chin is usually where I have these sort of like uh, foundation breakdown issues um, and you know i've got dry skin it's not even you know overly oily so usually you wouldn't really experience that too much um but i think what was happening was my skin was trying to suck moisture out of this that just didn't exist so yeah this was not really suitable for my skin type i wouldn't buy it again um but i would consider shiseido uh, foundations in the future. I also have the Hask Minoy Oil Nourishing Shine Oil Moisturizers and Revitalizers. Um, this was lovely. I really enjoyed this. I, I liked the packaging. Uh, it's plastic but it meant that it was safe to travel with. The cap is very sturdy and the formula was nice. I would consider buying them again in the future. Um, this is a makeup sponge from Sigma. So this is one of their like, you know, angled sponges. I don't, um, I don't really use these sponges with all of their angles. I just used the like sort of traditional round side. 
um, just because of the way I do my makeup and I don't feel like it's necessary to use any like you know sharp edges um, it was fine there was nothing super special about it it's not particularly soft or it didn't you know apply the makeup in any magical way um, but what I did notice is it's starting to like break down it was leaving like little black dots on my face so time to go I wouldn't buy that again um, just because like you know I would maybe buy a Sigma sponge again but I would go for a traditional teardrop shape rather than um, that sort of you know angled sculpting thing um, I've got a bunch of lip balms here. I have the O'Keeffe's Lip Repair Unscented Lip Balm. Um, this didn't really cut it for me. I just wasn't, I felt like my lips weren't actually being hydrated. It was fine if my lips were in pretty good condition. I was just using it as like a barrier product to hold in the moisturizer, but um, that's just not really what my lips are like on an average day because... Uh, they never recovered after I was on isotretinoin, so there's that. Um, I also have two, like, flavoured lip balms. So I have a Hershey's Milk Chocolate one and a Twizzlers one. The Twizzlers one I really liked. The Hershey's one I had some trouble with because I was panning both of these. Um, the Hershey's one I was trying to power through it, so I was using it quite regularly. Um, I was noticing that I was getting a little bit of, like, irritation. It was making my lips feel drier um, when I was using it too often. Um, I did mention that in my project pan and someone said maybe it actually is related to the um, like the fragrance that they use in it and I think that's probably what it was because I also powered through the Twizzlers one and I didn't have issues with that. Eve Lom Morning Time Cleansing Balm. Um, this is a nice product but uh, it, I, I didn't really love it. Um, I think you have to be a certain type of person to enjoy this. So it is not designed to be um, a makeup removing product, although that is how I used it because otherwise I wasn't going to use it at all. Um, it is designed as a morning cleanser. You put it on dry skin, you, you know, rub it in, and then you take a warm, damp terry toweling cloth or muslin cloth and you wipe it off. Now, this does not emulsify, so it does leave a greasy residue on the skin. And I think if you're very dry and you can tolerate the ingredients that are in here being left on your skin and they don't break you out, then you're not going to have an issue. Now, I have to admit, I didn't have any breakout issues with this, but I probably have a little bit of like trauma <laughs> from when I was going through my acne shit so I'm really nervous about having that like greasy residue feeling left on my skin and maybe it's like unfounded maybe you know this never would have been an issue maybe my skin would have loved it but I was too scared to really go down that path and even try it out so I did use this as a makeup um breaking down step like makeup removing step and then I just cleansed my skin very very thoroughly afterwards to make sure I moved that uh, removed the residue so I wouldn't buy this again however I will say and do I have one here no I don't um, the standard cleanser the like makeup removing cleanser from Yves Lom, I love that I really really enjoy it it's a very good cleanser it is very bougie and expensive though so that's why it's not sort of top tier for me um some more products i have the philip kingsley elasticizer so this is a pre-wash treatment you pop this in dry hair you go about your life for as long as you can and then you shampoo and condition um this is a very nice product i really enjoyed it but like i said these sort of pre-wash treatment products um I often forget to use them. It takes, you know, I have to be very mindful about using them. So if it's not like in my shower to be used, I do have some trouble with that. Um, so I can't say I would run out and buy this again, but it's not that I wouldn't. Like, 
you know if I was doing an online shop and I saw this and it was on sale and I was like you know what I kind of feel like I actually need that in my life I don't have a product like that and I'm interested in using it again then I would consider buying it but I'm not you know running out to buy it uh, Clarisonic refreshing gel cleanser so Clarisonic has closed down they closed down quite a while ago I had this little sample I used it I loved it it was fantastic their skincare was pretty good it's a shame they didn't focus on that a bit more um, hourglass caution extreme lash mascara I love this it's one of my favorites that's just a mini I've already cracked open another mini and I am enjoying it um, this is the oi serum absolute color gloss so this is um, just a little single use vial you pop this in your damp hair after you've shampooed and conditioned and got the excess moisture out um, you pop this in and then you just style as usual and it adds some um, like glossiness to the hair they're quite nice there is another one that you mix in with your conditioner and you put it in in the shower and then rinse it out I prefer that one um, these have been discontinued though so I'm just using what I have uh, Davines has also created a new product which I think is a combination of the two that I've just spoken about um, and it's an in shower product and it's also very nice I might try to remember to talk about that when I next do a beauty recap video because I've used it a few times I think and I'm quite enjoying it um, benefit micro brow micro filling pen so I put this in my project pan because I was like oh yeah I should try and actually finish this up um, and I just I got one use out of it and I was just like I, I give up um, so it's one of those little like prong you know little prong felt tip prong dudes um, and it's meant to like mimic hairs in the brows now I love the concept of this I love it but it doesn't work for me I find that I can do one brow and then when I go to do the other brow no bueno I think what's happening is um, the felt tip is loaded up with product since it's been sitting for some time and it's had a chance to you know absorb the product up into the tips of the felt tip applicator and then I run it through my hair or through my brow um, it picks up you know fucking foundation and powder and all this shit that's already on my skin moisturizer and all sorts of stuff um, and it deposits the color that it can and the brush also starts to get dirty just simply by being dragged through my brows when I go to do my second brow it's like I got, I got nothing for you I need to, I need to have a nap before we do another brow and that's not functional for me so um, it's not functional product I wouldn't buy it again I'm frustrated with it I'm I'm considering it done because I tolerated it essentially my god guys this this product if you've been around for a, a some time you'll be like the fuck is that what Hayley, how long has it been? I know, it's been so long. Um, this is a Brazilian Joya conditioner from Sol de Janeiro. I love the way this smells. I love it. It's so good. I Look, I feel like this product, the scent of this product is polarizing. You either love it or you hate it. And I get it if you hate it. I'm, I totally understand. I really enjoy it though. Um, now, I really wanted to try uh, their shampoo and conditioner when they launched it. <laughs> I bought this when they launched it, when it finally came to Australia. Um, I bought like a, you know, a mini pack to try and I had a really hard time with it. Um, I think there was potentially some silicones in there that my hair didn't like. I have discovered my hair is not a huge fan of um, some types of silicon. And uh, essentially this made my hair uh, really, really greasy. So I discontinued use and I said to my mum, I put them in the shower and I said, you go forth and use them. And it's only just now that she's finished up the conditioner. She finished up the shampoo like 500 years ago. Um, but she's only just finished up the conditioner. I was even like considering using it as like a shaving cream kind of thing. Um, but I didn't. She beat me to it. Um... <laughs> needless to say I wouldn't buy that again 
more lychee flower hand cream this is nice it's nothing super duper special it's just a, a hand cream that helps to hydrate and it has a nice fragrance um i wouldn't say that i'm like gonna run out and buy these again but also i'm you know not saying that i never ever will buy one again i just don't need hand cream at the moment um this looks like my last full size product this is the Ostar Nail Super Shining Top Coat. So this is a gel top coat. Um, they last me a very, very long time. Um, it's always quite an exciting moment when I realize that I, like the bottle is starting to get empty. And then when I go to use it one day and I'm like, yeah, this is too hard to use now. So she's done. Um, very nice top coat, very shiny and quite um, resilient. I'm not sure if Ostar is still around, but shit, now that's on the ground. Um, if they are, that's a nice product. So there's that. Um, okay, samples. Here we go. I have the Way Wave Spray. Um, so this is like a texturizing spray. It's okay. I don't mind it. I wouldn't buy it again though, because I don't really, I don't really go for like texturizing my hair. It's very like, there's not much of it. Texturizing it makes me feel like it's just knotty and dirty and gives me a complex. Um, Molten Brown, uh, Vetiver and Grapefruit Bath and Shower Gel. Look, I fucking love Molten Brown Shower Gels. They're banging. They're so good. Um, I've been having a little look at like, they've got an advent calendar this year. I, they have an advent calendar, you know, most years. Um, but I've also been looking at some of their holiday stuff and I'm like, yeah, I love their shower gels. They're so good. So freaking good. Really like, I usually use them when I travel, right? Because they're like, I usually have the minis. I never buy it in a full size. I usually get it in some sort of gift with purchase thing or whatever. And I save the minis for when I'm traveling. Now, when I'm traveling, very often it's related to some sort of holiday that might be somewhere warm, which means I'm wearing a lot of sunscreen and I'm, you know, in chlorinated pools or I'm in the ocean. So when it comes to the whole body cleansing at the end of the day kind of thing, I'm trying to get off sunscreen and usually moisturizer and salt and chlorine and all that jazz. And I really like my um, shower gel to be quite effective. So, you know, gets nice and foamy so it can really break down um, the sunscreen residue and this just does that beautifully also they have really nice scents and the scents are like they're complex and grown up without being like almost obnoxious and like overdone um, I feel like these days when it comes to fragrance that is grown up I feel like it's also often a lot of the time it's over complicated like there is beauty in simplicity of a fragrance and I feel like molten brown thank you very much for yes yes thank you for making all that noise um I feel like molten brown does grown up and sophisticated really well without being like you know almost pretentious in the way that they um formulate their different fragrance blends so yeah I love Molten Brown. I really, really love them. And I would 100% buy that stuff again. Yeah, do you agree? I agree. Do you want to show them a sample? Here, you show them. Here, you have to hold it up here. This is a Lancome serum. <laughs> yeah. No, it's not. It's a moisturizer. Here, show them. Show them. No, that's not how it... No, no, you can't take it. Show them. Very good. Oh, yeah, she's trying. Okay, I take it now. Um, this is a Lancome Visionaire Advanced Multi-Correcting Cream. Now she thinks it's a toy and she wants it. Come on, Whitney. No, no, you can't have it. Um, look, I used this while I was traveling and I was having seriously dry skin issues. So I don't know if it was good. Honestly, nothing was good enough for me when my skin was that dry. Um, I also have the Lancome Genifique uh, Youth Activating Cream. I have two of them. Same deal. And also, I have to say, there's usually, I usually only get two or three uses out of this, so it's very hard for me to gauge how I feel about it. Um, I also had the Chanel uh, Camellia Rouge 
cream oh, oh anyway this was actually nice this is very hydrating now um when i first went to perth earlier in the year i went and bought a chanel foundation and i went into a chanel store and um, the foundation that I wanted was out of stock. So I was like, you know what? I don't care. I kind of want to treat myself anyway. Um, so I picked a different foundation. I was talking to the lady about, you know, like my skin is dry. and Because she's trying to help me. She's like, are you sure that's the one you want? Like, you know, tell me a little bit about your skin and stuff. So she's doing a good job. Anyway. We talked through it and we did decide that the one that I had chosen was pretty good. Um, and then she was really super sweet and she put together a whole bunch of samples for me. There was fragrance. She even put in some fragrance samples for Chris. Um, and there was a moisturizer and a serum sample. I'm still going on the serum, um, but this moisturizer was very nice. And again, I used it when I was having the dry skin freak out thing and I felt like I got relief. So this was nice. Um, I've actually not really tried any Chanel skincare besides little samples. And I have to say that maybe my opinion on not buying skincare from Chanel is changing. And it's not that I really had an opinion about not buying skincare from Chanel. It just wasn't really on my radar. You know, I'm like, I'm into the Chanel makeup, not so much the skincare. However, I've had a good experience with this. So, you know, maybe one day in the future I will buy me some Chanel skincare because a treat yourself. Um, Ch uh, not Chanel, Chantecaille. Um, this was a flower harmonizing cream. I've used this in the past. It is very nice. I even cut it open and scraped it out. It was it was that good. Um, yeah, I've used that sample quite a few times um, and will happily use it again in the future. Uh, Dior Addict Lip Maximizer. So this is like a lip plumping lip gloss. It makes your lips feel like they're plump, but they're just irritated. It doesn't actually plump them. By the time I sort of got to the point where it was hard to get stuff out of this, I was like, I'm so over it. I wouldn't buy it. Um, Moroccan oil. This is a hair Moroccan oil treatment. Is there still a little bit in there? A tiny bit in there. Mm. I might pull that out and use it. Um, I love this stuff. It is one of my favorites and it had been for many, many years. And then I discovered Devoness. Madeline got me into it. Um, so yeah, I love this. I have no issue using it. I would totally buy it again in the future. Like if I needed a hair oil and I couldn't find Davines, but I could find this, like that's where I would go. Um, for me, they're interchangeable because I get the really good results from both Davines oil and the Moroccan oil. I also have a, is this my last? Yes, it's my last item, yay. Um, this is from Fresh, it is a Sugar Rose Balm. I really like this, um, but I've talked about the packaging before. It's not, the product is super soft. So if you've used this, you know. Um, super soft product, uh, if you, you know, put it on your lips, it like, bends and mushes and it gets all messy. I really feel like this should be in one of those sort of um, clicky dispenser like pen type things. Let me see if I can find something to... I don't know how to describe it. I can only picture it in my head. Like one of these guys from Lipstick Queen. So essentially what you do is you like rotate it and it, it goes up. Um, but it's in like it's supported and I mean these are non-retractable. Why am I orange? Oh, it's color balancing to back here whenever I move. Why camera? I think it's also this is not helping. Okay, that's better. So anyway, I love this product. I think it's fantastic. My lips respond really well to it. I liked the color of this rose one. Um, I've used Tulip in the past. And I, again, I like the formula. The formula is like solid across the board, but the color of the tulip is a bit off for me. The rose is very pretty. I just don't like the packaging. And I feel like, you know, this product has been around for so long and I know people have, since the dawn of time for this brand, people have said the packaging sucks, like there's a problem. And for them to go that long without, you know, coming up with a solution, I'm like, 
Somebody over there just does not give a shit. You've got a banging product and you can totally improve it by putting it in good packaging and you don't. Therefore, it tells me you don't give a shit. Um, so anyway, there's that. Although I've not checked out this brand in years, so maybe they have changed their packaging. If they have, feel free to correct me down below and I'll go buy one. Well, I won't because like I said, I've got so many lip balms, but I would in the future, 100%. So that is it for my empties, my most recent empties. I don't know how many months uh, of empties this is. I, I'm sure you guys will know. I'll put in the title or the description box. Um, but I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm happy. I'm happy with what I finished here. I can see a whole bunch of products in front of me and it feels good that they are done and out of my life and I am moving on to panning new things. So yeah, it's nice. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you have any comments that you want to leave, there is a comment section for you. So go down there and type away. Let me know your thoughts and I will catch you in the next one.